Well, welcome to Forecast Lab, December 10th, just two weeks until Christmas. Well, we're starting pretty late at 6.02 p.m. and we can't spend two hours rendering this video. So we're gonna make this kind of short here. So let's get on with the surface map and see what's going on. Cold front coming into the central plains there. Cold air advection coming in the backside. And then we've got this other, I don't know if that's a stable wave. It's certainly a closed low around the Las Vegas area. You can see the north winds back there on the backside. And this is being driven by this high up in Alberta. Looks like 1025 millibars up there and some of it extending into North Dakota. And then the receding high pressure system, that's off the coast of North Carolina there. And we're getting that warm southerly flow coming around the west side. Temperatures in the 60s across much of the southern U.S. replacing these 30s and 40s in the eastern Midwest and upper Appalachian region. A glance at the water vapor imagery for early this afternoon shows quite a bit of activity there in the central Rocky Mountain region. And we run that forward. You can see that it is spilling out there into the Great Plains around Nebraska and Kansas. Looks like a little bit of high-based convection there north of Dodge City. So this comma appearance here, this is indicative of a bear clinic system. Maybe a major shortwave. Maybe an axis kind of like that. The 500 millibar heights and vorticity does seem to indicate that. Some sort of axis running from southern Colorado out towards Austin, Texas. Further back, it looks like some noise due to unstable flow through this mountainous region. And down to the south, this looks to be kind of like a major short wave from Phoenix southward. So some of that there in Arizona, probably this feature right here, and then running that forward. You can see that crossing the Rockies there and some very strong transverse banding indicated around Chihuahua, Mexico. So all this is going to be coming out into the plains over the next day. And we can watch that take place here. There's 0Z, 6Z, and then there's 12Z. So this all forms up into one large axis of positive vorticity, indicating some significant lift out ahead of it from central Kansas down to central Texas tomorrow morning. And then that lift will be heading eastward towards Arkansas and Missouri during the day. And then we notice this negative tilt feature here. This is kind of like a one-two punch going on. And you can see that by tomorrow afternoon, we kind of lose that forward wave and then the negative tilt trough becomes dominant. And we get this large area of lift from western Louisiana, east Texas, all the way up to eastern Kansas tomorrow evening. And then that just all kind of progresses northeast overnight and ends up in the Great Lakes early Saturday. Looking out west, here comes a new jet max. That's right there in Nevada upper level low across Wyoming, and we can pretty much assume that with ridging here and troughing here, that there's likely some sort of surface wave in the Four Corners area. So this is going to be during the day on Saturday. So there's that wave getting support from this jet max out to the west. So this is all going to move out onto the plains late on Saturday into Sunday, and this looks like a pretty impressive punch of energy. There's the Jet Max, and out ahead of this area of red and orange, that's going to be the left front quadrant of that Jet Max. So quite a lot of lift working on the panhandles late Saturday. So this is a lot of junk coming out into the Central Plains, and wow, look at that big slug of energy into the Dallas area on Sunday. So what does all this look like at the surface? Let's go down and check that out. So starting out, let's look at our frontal boundaries. They run something like that. There's the Canadian pushback behind it. And you can see this little area of 
cold air aloft, kind of a cold pool, producing some snow showers around Gallup, New Mexico. So all of that upper level lift is going to come out into the plains tomorrow. So by tomorrow evening, there it is triggering some showers and storms in Louisiana and Arkansas. And that's going to be out ahead of this cold front coming out of Texas right there. Then as we go into the day Saturday, we're dealing with that jet max coming out of there. And you can see the frontal system coming together there in Nevada. And then later in the day Saturday, there's our frontal system there. We know that the jet max is back in behind it, supporting that system. And then out in this region right here, a lot of lift associated with that left front quadrant. And you can see those snow showers coming out into the panhandles overnight and moving into Oklahoma early Sunday. So this is a potent little system, and we talked about this yesterday. So if you want to see some more about that, take a look at yesterday's webcast. So that's going to progress eastward and then move into the Carolinas by Monday. And you can see we're totally not out of the woods yet by Monday. It looks like another little system there in Colorado. There it is coming together right there. However, that looks to be kind of like a dry system. And without some of those factors like latent heat, that's going to keep that low from developing very much. And then we'll set our sights westward later in the week. We're still looking at a major system there in California, Nevada, and Oregon. And then that'll move eastward out into Texas next weekend. Okay, we got to get this wrapped up here. So let me go ahead and do that. So again, this was going to be kind of a short episode. So we'll get this out to you and we'll try to do something a little bit better for tomorrow. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.